How's it going all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And today, join me for my overview of these latest hardcovers from Humanoids. So, please stay tuned. Now before getting started, I do want to thank the folks at Humanoids for sending us copies of these books. All of these books are already out in the direct market and book market, so you can get them anywhere. So we're going to be looking at a couple of the latest Jodorowsky's Library Editions, the new Incal, Psychoverse, The History of Science Fiction, it's a graphic novel venture that I did not expect to fall in love with, uh, and the latest printing of Techno Priest. Uh, so I will put timestamps in the description of the video if you just want to jump around and are curious about one particular book or two particular books. Not going to get into spoilers, just doing overviews, checking out the artwork and build of these books, and talking just a little bit about these wonderful stories. All right, let's go ahead and start with the history of science fiction. So here's the first book we're going to be talking about, The History of Science Fiction, the graphic novel adventure. Now, this is one, look at those orange and paper there, whoa. Um, this is one that was Mark Wade's favorite book that he read, and I remember when I interviewed him, he talked to me about how much he really enjoyed this. Uh, there's a forward here by Ted Chang. And here's the writer, Xavier Dolo. Gabriel Morizet Vaughn is the artist. I'm so sorry I'm butchering that name. Mark Benz, of course, one of the important roles here of uh, being the translator of this book. So what exactly is this? Um, this is a unique way of looking at the history of science fiction and answering a lot of the questions that a lot of people may have, like when science fiction started. Not just modern science fiction or American science fiction, even though they do focus on American or European science fiction, but they do dabble a lot in other world science fictions and where their works fit in. So the way that this is done is we meet our two, I guess, sort of protagonists, but they're kind of who we see the world through. And that's Robbie the robot and, or I'm sorry, Robert, as he goes by, and Jenkins the robot. Now you may be familiar with Robbie there from, of course, Forbidden Planet. And here's the thing, you are gonna sit here and look at every page and just start going, oh my gosh, it's Doc Brown, it's Star Trip, just on Kenny Omar talk pretty one day, it's Starship Troopers, it's 2001, it's Captain Harla, Captain Future, oh my gosh, somebody actually remembers Captain Future, Ulysses, like things like that. You're gonna do that a lot, because I know I did. But this covers everything it's so amazing the amount of work that they're able to cover just in 216 pages like to go from the beginning of science fiction like where things started when people started talking about going to the moon or going to other planets it's a really cool retrospective book that you know uh, it, it seems like most of the time people these days when they talk about science fiction we start you know with either the uh, the, the movement with movies or the early comics, um, or maybe late 1800s. I mean, this goes beyond that. It's crazy to see how much of an effort were spent uh, in these, what I think, like 200 or so plus years. Now, the paper stuck that they use in this is with semi-gloss paper, uh, but it does feel like matte paper. And I mentioned this being 216 pages. Uh, the book retails for $29.99. And... Even if you're not a fan of the graphic novel format or comic books, this is one that needs to be added to everybody's library. If you're a fan of science fiction movies or books, it's such a unique look at it. Um, my wife sat down, actually, when I was reading it, I think it was sometime in December, uh, I left it somewhere and I couldn't find the book. And she had taken it because, I mean, immediately you're going to see some iconic figures there. You're going to know who these characters are. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're not familiar with the world of anime or manga uh, or have only seen a handful of movies. You've seen a lot of these characters. So she was trying to figure out what this was, looked at the cover, and she goes, oh, that's pretty interesting. And it really is. It really is. It's, it's such a success to me in bringing you a, I don't even want to call it a Cliff's Note version of what this history of science fiction is because that would do it an injustice because there is a lot of detail and narrative that goes into this. I mean, we go past the golden age of science fiction 
and oh man, it's just such a superb task. So you're going to see all kinds of things in here. You're going to see who inspired who and where some of these ideas originated from. And that's what I enjoy about these type of stories. Now, if you're expecting everything to be in here, you're going to be disappointed. I mean, if you know more than these people did doing this book, wow, uh, you got a good head on your shoulders because there's a lot of science fiction in here. Like, they really don't touch into any of the Chinese science fiction, uh, but there's a lot in here and it's a wonderful start. You will benefit from this book. Uh, the book is printed in Latvia and it is sewn binding and there's that eye lays over really nice and here's the ribbon so odds are if you have seen a sci-fi movie or are a huge fan of sci-fi you're gonna see some i don't want to call them easter eggs because it's all part of the story and i really like the way this ends because i think this ended the best way that it could have ended when talking about science fiction all the way in the back is a nice index if you have good eyesight that is I had to put my readers on. I keep mentioning that, but I'm just being honest because, I mean, that is some small font and the pages where you're going to find some of these characters or people throughout the book. And there's a lot. A lot. Now, the next few books I'm going to be talking about, um, you will have benefited by reading The Ink Cow. I've done an overview on my channel uh, both of the latest slipcases. It's a wonderful science fiction, religious experience, spiritual experience. Uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of Western writers really love that book. And it rightly deserves the love. For me personally, I like the Meta Barons a little more. But everybody has their own favorite, what we call the Jodoverse. Uh, so yes, Alejandro Jodorowsky, or Jodorowsky, or Jodo, uh, is pretty much signing off on these projects that are happening. The man is 93 years old, so he's given his blessings. He's done with the characters, which is really sad because, I mean, it's just been a little over a decade since I got into these characters, and it feels like the rest of the world, I'm so jealous, has been into this world for decades. And we just, at least for me, you know, I didn't get into european comics until a little it was a little over a decade ago but i'm glad i did so this is a very interesting story uh, it is written by mark russell from flintstones one of my favorite standalone graphic novels or one of my favorite reads of 2022 uh drawn by yannick paquette uh dave mckeg doing the colors yannick paquette he's done a lot of work over at dc comics mainly working with grant morrison on their run of wonder woman earth one for example or um the Seven Soldiers, and Dave McKegg has done colors at Marvel Comics. So, this is pretty much Incal, the world of Incal, continuing without Johto, which is so interesting uh, to see. And you have, I believe all these gentlemen are American. You have the most American team working on what is probably known as the representation of european comics which i find so interesting i always joke about how like people from the uk come over here and take our actors jobs now it seems like the american invasion is happening over in europe which well, let's, let's see how this works okay so first of all if you've read Inca, like i said you had to have read Inca in order to enjoy this to get the little uh, jokes that are in here or the setups for future stories because all of this that you're about to read takes place before the Incal. As a matter of fact, the final page here is uh, the beginning of the Incal. So you do see John the Fool make his return, you see Wolfhead, you see the Meta Baron, and you see these new characters from the Psychoverse because we have the Matterverse and we have the Psychoverse. So it's pretty much if you die in the Matterverse or if you're trying to escape the Matterverse, the Psychoverse will accept you. And they look like humanoid type of characters wearing leather, like they just stepped out of the Matrix, if you will. Does it still have the crazy and like sexual content that Jodo would have put in a book? Yeah, it's there from time to time. Uh, does it have the crazy spaceship designs like we're used to seeing from Jimenez or, or Mobius or Ladron. Not exactly. 
And that's not to say that Yannick Paquette is not an amazing artist, because he really is a great artist. As a matter of fact, this is probably one of my favorite things he's ever drawn. I mean, that is John D. Fool. That looks like John D. Fool, who some people have always said that Mobius kind of mirrored himself, um, or rather, he was mirrored a little bit after Mobius. So it, it is an interesting story, and I don't think the Psychoverse idea was really touched upon any of the Johto books I've read, whether it was Techno Priest or Meta Barons or, or of course, the any of the Incal books. So I believe that is a concept original uh, from Russell himself. But it is interesting. The panel layouts are a lot different than what I'm used to. The colors, way different than what I'm used to. Now... The big difference, of course, is that when these books come out in Europe, sometimes it takes a couple of years for books like this to be made. Here in America, we're used to just cranking things out left and right because we have monthly issues. Over there, there are books that, I mean, there's a book I'm going to be talking about, Techno Priest, as a matter of fact, here in a minute, that took 10 years to make. So they know how to slow down over there. So this is another book uh, that takes a lot of ideologies from... Uh, Johto, you know, the whole idea of escaping and the benefits of escaping the reality and of course the idea that one person with your with your own human mind can change the entire world. Now what's really cool about this is that all the way in the back, they did my job for me. I love when people do this. This is the suggested reading order of the InCal universe. So you start with the InCal before the InCal, after the InCal, final InCal, both of those are we're going to be talking about here in a little bit. Meta Barons Genesis Kastaka, which I do not recommend before Meta Barons. But this is just the chronological... Well, no, it's not because before... Hmm, okay. Uh, Meta Barons First Cycle, The Weapons of Meta Barons, The Second Cycle, Cymac, Megalex, Techno Priest, The Incal Psychoverse, finally at number 12, Dying Star, and Kill Wolf Head. So those are the next two books because it's going to be a trilogy. I'm really interested. Now, neither one, uh, Mark Russell nor uh, Johnny Paquette, are going to be working on these books. I believe it's Pete Woods doing the Wolfhead book. Yeah. Love his art. Uh, big fan of his since the days of Superman. And then we have John Davis Hunt doing the art in The Dying Star. So, looking forward to those. Uh, this book right here retails for $24.99. It has 120 pages and it does have glued binding. Uh, the paper stock, it is uh, glossy paper that they're using for this, like thick, glossy paper. Next up is the latest printing of Techno Priest. Uh, so this, I believe, was the two printings ago before this one. This one was $49.99, and you can see the differences in the spines here. And speaking of spines, I'll hold those up after this right here. So... They are changing the look of the spines, maybe to make it fit the Johto universe or the Incal universe uh, stories. The back of the books are different. Uh, the retail price of this one was $49.99, and this one is $54.99, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and both of these books have 408 pages, because I, I did the... Uh, <laughs> the what's it called? The, 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 the comparison that there was nothing left out of the books and yeah they both have the same identical page count uh, so really quickly let's just while we have it out let's talk about the differences here the red end paper in the new printing and the paper stock is what i know most people are wondering about because they used glossy paper for this original or this printing that i have and then they used a thinner glossy paper for the new printing I can't, I never had the oversized book and I'm so jealous of the people that did because that's one of my uh, most wanted books. So I don't know what kind of paper stock they used there, but for these they used uh, glossy paper. And I believe this previous printing was printed at PRC while this one here was printed in Lithuania. So the Techno Priest is a spin-off title of the Incal. It's another character that showed up in the Incal um, do you need to have read the Incal to enjoy this? I think so. I think you would benefit from it. That's why I strongly suggest it. I think this is one of the most awesomest stories. Like I said, I still think Meta Barons is my favorite, but this one is close. This was probably my third favorite because there's just something special about the Incal. 
had to skip some pages. So this is all the story of this old guy that we see at the beginning, this old guy. Uh, this is Albino, or Albino, rather. And, no, Albino, but we'll just, for the sake of this video, we'll call him Albino. But it is his story and how he became the Supreme Techno Priest. He's 100 years old. I can't show the page because it shows a couple... That, I mean, every one of these books, because it's by Johto, will have some kind of sexual content or nudity. So if you're easily offended or you can't deal with things like that, gratuitous violence from time to time, maybe these books are not for you. Um, every one of the books, including the Johto Library books, I believe. Yeah, both of those books will. And Techno Priest here. Incal, not so much. The, the one that I just did an overview of. But these definitely. Now, back to this. So this is all the story of Albino. He goes back and he's writing his memoirs while navigating through space. Uh, he's hanging out with his pet right here, which is actually a big part of... Let me see if I can show that. Sure, I'll just put a near mint condition logo down there. His little pet down there, that is Teeny Griefy. He kind of becomes like his lifelong companion. Uh, but he's actually a little bit more than that, as you find out later on. Now, here you see the flashback of his mother, how she ends up giving birth to three children. There is rape in here, again, so strong sexual content. Um, now, there's his, I believe it's his brother, uh, Almag Almagro, I believe. Yeah, he's the favorite child by Panefa, who is the mother. Uh, now, he also has a younger sister, Onyx, but this mainly focuses on him and how... He just has let down his mom uh, because he wants to be a software designer. He wants to be a video game programmer. He's found his calling in life. But there's a lot more to it than that. My goodness, this artwork here. That's something I didn't even talk about. There's an introduction by the artist as well. Zoran Janjatov, I believe. Let's see, introduction by Zoran Janjatov. Talking about his art and the... Let me see, the colors were done by Fred Beltran. And it's an interesting introduction because he talks about, like, if you look at the beginning of how this story starts and the colors used there, and then you move on to later on, you see the colors have changed. You see almost his art style has changed. It almost has become, like, computer colors. But he talks about the change in that because this took 10 years to make. Whenever I talked about earlier on about how sometimes European comics take that long, you know, we're used to American comics taking a month here, but this took 10 years to make. That's crazy. I can't imagine very many people waiting 10 years or something, although it does feel like that at times, right? Looking at you, Kevin Smith's Black Cat story. Or was it Bullseye? No, it was a Bullseye story. He never finished it. Uh, yes. So... This is an amazing project because this mixes the religious aspects of things and the technological aspects of things and how they come together in this future. So the video game that they're creating, that they're playing at the very beginning, has a lot to do with what's going on in the real world. Uh, and he goes from universe, eh, galaxy to galaxy to get through, to go through different types of trials. So there's a lot of different type of characters you're going to see in here. Uh, you have your basic story of good versus evil. But you throw in a lot of religious symbolism and mythology. Man, it gets really deep. Sometimes it feels like you're completely lost. Look at the creature designs and the amount of detail. Which I'm going to point out in every one of these. Because there are some phenomenal artists that Johto has worked with. Now, this is one that I wish I had in the big oversized book, but I missed out on that one. And they haven't reprinted it since, so I'm hoping that they'll do some kind of slipcase edition of this one like they did the Meta Barons and the Incal. Now, one of the things that I always like to mention before anybody falls in love with the art is that European style of storytelling is different than American. Just like manga is different than American comics in the way that they tell stories. Uh, sometimes you have to get used to it, and it's not for everybody, and I, I get it. Uh, so I, I've had some of my viewers going, man, I love the artwork, but I cannot get into the story. It's too crazy. Uh, it, there's there's less sci-fi and more mythology in it than I thought, things like that. And I think this is just the perfect amalgam of what I love about European books, is that you do get 
crazy, insane stories. But if you love sci-fi, you really appreciate how masterfully it's done by the end. This freaking journey that you go on that for the most part starts off pretty normal. And then by the time you get to the middle of the book, you start asking yourself, wait a minute, which character am I supposed to be rooting for? Because Albino does a lot of things that are kind of questionable, but he has to do them. Um, I'm a big fan of this one. So hopefully they'll reprint the big limited slipcase edition. The beautiful artwork deserves it. And I know there are actually um, some of my European viewers are not fans of the art in here because of the colors, but I think it stands out, right? It's so different than Mobius. It's so different than Jimenez that it's or it's so different than before in Cal too, that it really stands out as its own thing. It almost feels like it's its own world, but really it's all in the world of the in Cal. Now there's no extras in the back, just other titles in the in Cal universe. And here's what all the spines of the books look like together. These are the ones we're going to be talking about today. These are the ones we're talking... And for you spine watchers, here's what all the spines of the books look like together. Or, I guess depending on how you store your books, they'll look like this on your shelf. But let's hold it like this so the camera can see all of them. Alright, let's get back to the overviews. Next up is the biggest... Jodorowsky Library Edition book that we have. And when I say Library Edition, please don't get these confused with like the Dark Horse Library Edition books. The size of these books are just a little bit shorter than your Omni Editions or your Deluxe Editions. So they are about the size of those standard size hardcover books that are just these trade paperbacks in hardcover format. So that's the size of these books. Uh, but this is the thickest one. This one has 416 pages. And this one retails for $49.99. Uh, this in here, oh my gosh, every one of these books, you have to have read the Ink Cal to enjoy. And honestly, the Meta Barons as well, because what you have in here are final Ink Cal after the Ink Cal, Meta Baron Genesis Kastaka, Weapons of Meta Baron, Crest of Kastaka, and Tears of Gold. There's a lot in here. And prepare for your mind to be blown. I, I, I I know, like, I pick favorites, but this is probably my favorite group of artists that have worked on an Alejandro Jodorowsky book. Because while we have Jimenez on the Meta Barons and we have Mobius on Incal, those books will never be collected in a library edition. So it's really cool to see all these uh, wonderful artists together. This is Ladron. Now, some people may know him from his European work, but I first remember seeing his name in those issues of Cable uh, from the 90s, where he kind of had a Jack Kirby type of style. So to see him go from that to the insanity that is this, oh my gosh, it's night and day. Uh, this book right here, now I've read before because I own the hardcovers, but... I would love to see this one collected in a big oversized format too. Because, I mean, look at the... F every single one of these panels is just filled with minute detail. It is insane. Okay, so, sorry. Final Incal. Or, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the... Yeah, Final Incal and then after the Incal. is when Mobius draws it. It was an idea that was first approached uh, to Mobius. To come back and do another story featuring the character of John D. Fool. Uh, this is a beautiful story, and you do see some reunions in here. Uh, you do see introductions of new characters in here, but again, benefiting if you have read the Incal. Now, what's really interesting about this is that the original idea was for, let's actually get to it, Mobius to draw it. So Mobius came back to the title years later and started something called After the Incal. However, due to commitment to other works or just wanting to work on other projects, he never did get to finish it. So in Step Ladron, like the original idea was to have Ladron just finish out this story and continue the story. But Ladron suggested, hey, why don't I just redo it from the start? Which gave Jodorowsky a chance to rewrite some of the things that he didn't enjoy uh, or that he could have tweaked up a little bit. So it's really cool to compare after the Incal, which is not as long because this is an actual finished product here, to final Incal. What else you're going to find in here? Oh my gosh. 
Weapons of the Meta Barons, another one of my favorites, but that is because I love Travis Charest's artwork. Now, he's somebody that I remember when he was drawing Dark Star for uh, DC Comics, and then he blew up big. Like, people were like, oh my gosh. And it's interesting to think about him uh, starting out because it felt like he was kind of a Jim Lee type of artist. And he draws a lot of this, but he doesn't draw all of it. He kind of fell behind, so they task Zoran Jandatov to finish this out. So this, again, is a follow-up to the Meta Baron story. My gosh, but Travis Charé, man, his art is just killer. And this definitely needs one of those big oversized formats. It's a beautiful, beautiful drawn story. Oh my gosh, just the armor and the details. He's a phenomenal story artist. Um, slow, obviously, because, well, he couldn't keep up with the schedule, even for a European comic, so they had to get Zoran to finish it out. But it's an interesting story featuring the characters that you've met in the Meta Barons. And then, oh man, look at that. This is Genesis Kastaka. So this takes place in the past um, for the Meta Barons. Not how all the Meta Barons came to be, but only a particular amount of them. And this one, I think Kastaka is drawn by Das Postadas, if I'm not mistaken. Trying to give credit where credit is due. And then there's other stories in here. This is the crest of Kastaka in here. This one, Jimenez comes back to the world of Meta Barons to tell a short story. And then you have Tears of Gold, which was originally published in Metal Herlant number 40, uh, 145 in 2004. This one also drawn by Ladron. It's about a girl that cries gold. Oh man, this one, this book, my goodness, has so much beautiful artwork in it. Just for that alone, even if you're not enjoying the stories is worth it now of course since there's no volume numbers on these uh, this is the actual order of these books not that it really matters you can put them however you want to uh, but i do notice that the first johto library does not have the names of the books in there like animal 5 or megaplex so that is something that they started doing with volume 2 the son of the gun and pietrolino so that's what they look like together and I know there's a couple more books that are at least solicited. So we have at least up to volume six or seven, I believe. Last but not least, this is the Jodorowsky's Library, volume four. This one is really awesome because for the first time, it publishes a book that has never been published here, and that is the Saga of Alandor. And let's actually look a little bit of that. Oh, each one of these, the back looks like this. And here's your credits. The Saga of Alandor is done by Silvio Cadello. Diosomante, which has been published before in hardcover format, uh, was drawn by Jean-Claude Gao. And then these short stories in the back that all have to do with the Screaming Planet. So this right here is about a revolutionary war between four different sections of a planet. Uh, it does have a lot of religious uh, themes in here. At first, it's told like a prose novel. So you are missing some things that aren't in the drawings. Like you're, it feels like you're almost cheated out of some of the art because it's told through prose. And that's only for at the very beginning. And then it goes into full graphic novel mode. Now this took a few years to make and there was an idea for a third volume of this series, but it never came to be. So you can even see his art and the colors change. One of my favorite things about this I don't know if I can show a page, but sometimes he'll sneak in little creatures that are outside of the panel. So I really like the panel uh, layout of these particular stories. The big one in here for me, though, is and always has been Diosomante. Now, this is a beautiful story that is told uh, by Jean-Claude Gall. He was the artist. He was uh, actually the introduction here does an amazing job of introducing who he was. Uh, he was a college professor, art teacher, and he approached Jodo about wanting to draw one of his stories. So he gave him a story to draw. And it's about Queen Diosomante and how she rules over the kingdom of Arjas. Now, she is known throughout the land for her cruelty. She's also a beautiful woman. And she is pretty much at fault for just causing a bunch of wars that started in her name. Just for a, for a hope that somebody can spend the night, one single night with her. Knowing that she's going to kill you anyway at the time of the winter solstice. Now her beauty and 
wisdom is challenged by a king of another nation. So she takes him up on the challenge and goes on a journey, and they fall in love. Now, something weird ends up happening here. Uh, another book that takes a look at uh, religion and uh, theology and aspects of just humanity. And it's a beautiful story. However, even the hardcover, um, it wasn't finished. It didn't get finished because Jean-Claude Gall passed away. And it's so sad, unexpectedly, at a young age. Um, and it's so sad because what you get, instead of the finished product, because they were only on book three, I believe. So at the ending of this particular chapter, this was the next chapter. And some of the colors weren't there. The finished inks weren't there. And then sometimes you just get rough sketches of what was to be. Now, I did hear that Igor Cordy finished out the story. I'm not sure about that because I, I don't have that collection. I don't know where that was collected. But it's just a beautiful hardcover that I've owned. And I've always wondered, like, where the story could have gone. And, and it's sad when something like that happens. And it's, it's interesting that they didn't have a replacement artist ready, though. So it shows how close Johto works with his artist. Uh, the Screaming Planet is a series of three different stories connected by this Screaming Planet that's just flying around. This one is done by J.H. Williams. And it's about a vampire with a little bit of a twist. Uh, there's a fantasy story here by uh, Ciruelo Cabral. And then my favorite one is Who's Dreaming Now? This one's drawn by the phenomenal Jerome Pena. This might be one of my favorite short stories that Johto's ever done. And it's about a group of popes that are all united on this little planet where the main pope is giving them guidance and the main pope is sitting on top of this sleeping uh, tiger eagle. And then it turns out that this pope was nothing but a dream of the lion or tiger eagle. And it starts eating away at the other popes. And then there's twist after twist. <laughs> And I really like the ending. Uh, this one here, uh, this particular book, retails for $39.99. And this one has 272 pages. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of these hardcovers. Let me know in the comments down below if you are a huge fan of Humanoids books, uh, if you already have the Johto libraries, uh, what you hope they collect in another slipcase hardcover edition like the Incal or the Meta Barons, or what other coffee table book you want to see them bring back. I love those, my goodness, that were out of my price range when they came out. But that is all I've got today. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.